Hi, this is Chris and welcome to The Convulsive Hobbyist. If you're new to this series, uh, what I'll be doing today is attempting to record the guitar track to Cakes the Distance. Uh, I've done a couple other videos uh, kind of building up to this step. Uh, the first one was setting up a backing track, which I'll be playing against today. And the second one was a little bit more of a deep dive with my guitar instructor, Scott Tournay, on some of the uh, subtleties and intricacies of the guitar part. Even though it's not a particularly difficult guitar part uh, from a technical sense, uh, it's also not necessarily as straightforward uh, as it might seem on first listen. Uh, at least if you're a intermediate-ish uh, guitar student uh, like I am, um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit more to it than, than initially meets the ear. Uh, and I had initially hoped to simply sit down and play it through start to finish, uh, perfectly. Um, obviously with some, some time and learning and, and repetition. And while I can sit down and play it straight through, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, it's playing it straight through, uh, to the point where it's good enough uh, at a listen with all the other parts uh, put into the mix uh, where it gets a little tricky because it really is a very rhythmic guitar part. Uh, as my instructor points out, it's a little bit of a, of a rhythm and a lead kind of mashed together. Um, to my ear, it's more rhythm than anything. And it's that rhythmic element that really, I think, makes it important to to nail the, the the note hits. And there are really only three parts to this that repeat. Uh, and I'll run through them really quick in case you haven't seen the other bits. So the first part is the opening section. Uh, this is the verse. This is a series of dyads, uh, starting with the open uh, G and B. <laughs> straightforward. The next part is really the iconic rhythmic guitar part. Uh, this is used for the chorus and the, uh, I believe, the bridge. And that leads straight into the third part, which is kind of a modification that's in the same, playing in the same area. Uh, this is also part of the, uh, the chorus, and then it uh, also repeats later on in the song, really through the whole outro. at least for the first repetition of the chorus, we go directly from that back to the first part of the chorus and then straight into the verse. I'll just play through that really quickly here. So you can see there's a very quick transition. There's there's no stop between the that chorus section back into the verse. Um, now, no doubt the original Kate guitarist um, or really any professional guitarist would be able to handle that transition smoothly. They would have to if they're playing it on stage. Um, you know, unless you have two guitar parts, which isn't necessary in this song because none of these parts are overlapping. There's no reason why, um, you know, with with time and effort, um, you shouldn't be able to do that transition smoothly. But I think as you've seen, uh, at least for where I am, uh, I kind of fumble that because you're going, there are two very different parts and you need to really land. You need to be able to, to, to jump into those dyads. Uh, smoothly. So I'm just going to jump right into the next section, which will be uh, the actual recording, and then I can actually demonstrate kind of what I'm getting at with this. So let's get to it. 
So we're back in uh, Cakewalk, uh, my DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. Um, if you watch the first video of this series, you'll have seen me create this backing track for Cakes the Distance uh, using audio that I pulled down from uh, Ultimate Guitars, um, what they call their uh, official uh, tabs, but basically, uh, basically it allows you to to listen to a synthesized version of each of the tracks. Uh, and some of these are, are pretty good. Uh, people um, put in a good amount of time to try to uh, get accurate uh, renditions of the songs. Uh, so it, I find it to be a good starting point uh, if you're trying to do what I'm doing here, uh, which is essentially uh, create a, uh, a home studio clone of a song. Uh, not so much for artistic purposes uh, as much as just, uh, you know, learning the ropes, learning the basic process. So uh, what I've done here is uh, I've recorded uh, a, a single take of the, uh, the guitar part or parts, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, it really is a single guitar track, uh, but there are really the three parts that I went over, uh, musically three different parts that I went over uh, in the intro. Um, and you can certainly play through with a single guitarist. Uh, I'm sure that's how it's always been done live. Um, but listening to the studio recording, uh, it does raise the question for me, was it all recorded in one take? or were there differences in recording the different parts? And I raised that question because when you listen to the studio track, uh, here is a version uh, which I have uh, split out multiple tracks uh, from the studio version using a, an open source app called Spleeter. It's a, an AI type of app which will um, try to pick apart the different um, what they call stems, the, essentially the different, um, the different tracks, the different instruments uh, in uh, in a mixed recording. Um, it does okay. It's it's free. It's not uh, anywhere near the level of what um, what they used for the the Beatles documentary or or the remix of Revolver. But it's you know it's free. And uh, if you listen to this so-called other track here. This is the uh, the guitar part and some of the other, the horns, the, um, the keyboards. If so that that part right there was the the second half of the chorus. Uh, and even though it sounded a little muddled because of the demixing technology, um, you could kind of hear it sounded um, it sounded fairly mono, right? It sounded fairly centered. I'll go back a little bit. And then here comes Now there in the in the um, the bridge section, which is the same as the beginning of the chorus, that really hard driving da 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 da, it has more of a 3D sort of effect. It feels more stereo. There's something going on, whether it's a reverb. Uh, now this could have been done in post production. It could have been just a single track, and then they just gave it a little bit of a of an effect there. Uh, but it definitely sounds more full, especially when you compare that. I'll jump back a little bit. If you compare that to the verse, which comes up right after. You see how that level drops down? It sounds flat. More compressed. So, I mean, this could have all been recorded in just one take, and then in the mix, they could have gone in and boosted or applied different effects, a different compression, whatever, whatever. Uh, or they could have recorded it in different segments. You know, they could have been through different amps, different rooms. Uh, that that main um, 
chorus section may have even been doubled. And it's hard to tell. Um, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> doesn't really sound doubled, but it, it definitely sounds fuller. So given that, uh, I thought I would take uh, really kind of both just for fun, uh, but also to see if I could kind of approximate that that sort of difference in, in sound between the different sections uh, to actually record it in different sections. And it's a little bit of a cheat as well, because it allows me to just play through one section and then switch to the next and kind of, you know, retrain my, my fingers, um, you know, when I get to each part. So, uh, you know, just being totally honest, there, there is that element. Uh, initially, I had wanted to kind of play it through, and I can, but, um, you know, if I unmute this. This is rough. This was just a quick take. But I'd like to see if by by doubling that up, I can give it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more kick. Uh, but the other parts, uh, I'll do just straight because that's clearly how they did it on the album. So I'm going to mute this single take here and uh, I'm going to duplicate this track. And uh, by default, when you duplicate a track, it will duplicate the... It will cut out my audio when it's duplicating the track. That's a nice feature. Um, it will duplicate the, the audio config, any plugins. So I have three FX plugins here. I have a noise gate really just to cut down on hiss. See, I got a little bit of a background hiss there. Uh, I'm set up next to my computer. So uh, with my noise gate on, it, it kind of it covers that up when I'm not playing. Uh, the main one here is Amplitube. Um, this is, you can get a free version of this uh, with just a couple of amps. Uh, I went and bought the uh, the full version over Black Friday weekend. It cost me about a hundred bucks, but it gives you so many virtual amps, plugins, uh, pedals, effects, uh, you know, it's cabinet uh, simulators and whatnot. It's pretty good. And this is uh, a simulated... <coughs> emulated, simulated, whatever you want, uh, Silvertone, which is supposedly what uh, the original Kate guitarist played. Um, he played a semi-hollow body uh, guitar with humbuckers, um, playing a solid body Les Paul with humbuckers, uh, through a compressor pedal and a rat pedal for just a little bit of distortion, which is what I understand the guitarist used. And uh, it's going into this simulated Silvertone. These are uh, pretty close to the default uh, settings. I haven't tweaked them too much. Um, and that's going into this simulated 2x12 uh, cabinet. I'm not sure what speakers in there, or, or what simulated speakers are in there, with a handful of mics in a recording booth type of environment. So, um, so very flat sound with that. Um, you know, you can, you can change all this after you record it. I mean, you can go in and tweak all this, change out the amps, change out the cabinet, the room and whatnot. Um, but for now, this sounds pretty close, so I'll stick with it. And then I've got an EQ here, which is, um, you know, this is a third party free uh, equalizer that I installed uh, with a, just a default guitar uh, EQ setting. And I, I did go through and plug in some EQs for the bass and drums. Uh, again, just kind of just using some defaults uh, when I go through the, the, the mixing stage um, with some outside help from my uh, guitar, guitar instructor, uh, Scott Tournay, um, we'll go through and, uh, and tweak that some more. Uh, but for now, this is enough to get me started. And, uh, and one last comment, I've got each of these tracks going through to a, a stereo bus. This one I've just called Room with just a little bit of a, a reverb in there to give it just a little bit, just, just subtle. Um, you don't want to go too overboard on the reverb effects, but just to give these kind of canned uh, imported tracks just a little bit more of a, of a 
realistic flavor. Uh, once I've recorded each of the tracks, uh, I will then kind of fine tune, oops, I will then kind of fine tune the, um, the reverb effect so to give it a little bit more of a, I, I think the, the studio uh, recording was, was actually fairly flat. So I'll just try to try to emulate that. Anyway, so what I'll do with this new track here is uh, we'll call that the guitar verse. Otherwise, I'll leave it as is, uh, arm it for recording. And there's only two places, there's two verses here, verse one, verse two. Um, so I will just cue it up. I'll cue it up to one bar before, uh, oops, if I line it up correctly. 401. There we go. One bar before the verse kicks in, uh, just to give me a little bit of a lead in. And it will take me a couple of attempts to get this right. Uh... So that wasn't too bad, but I kind of uh, fumbled it a little bit at the end there. So I'm just going to record another take. I didn't like the way I started that one, so I'm just going to really quickly, I hit stop, hit the space bar, I'm going to control, un control Z to undo that, which briefly cut out my audio, and I will re-record by hitting R. Okay, that was pretty good. I think there was one little spot towards the end that I didn't care for, so let me just jump ahead and find it. Right there. So normally, I mean, I just re-record it to get it right, but for the purposes of demonstrating here, I'm just gonna pop open my takes. I've got a few different takes here. Right there, I just kind of stepped on it. Um, so if I then go and... All right, so I'm gonna line it up to the spot where I kind of stepped on it a little bit. And I'm going to click down here into a different take. Uh, let's go into take two here. And now I'm going to click back and see how smooth that is. That sounded pretty, pretty smooth. So I'm going to collapse my takes here and you can see it's kind of, it's recombined it for me. So, um, I've got out of two flawed takes, I was able to get one pretty good one. Um, and yeah, the right thing to do is, is to, to redo it cause I'm sitting here and I may as well get a perfect take, but really for the purposes of kind of demonstrating, uh, to show how easy it is to work with multiple takes. Um, now I could copy and paste this into the second verse, but what I'll do is I'll play through that second verse because I need the practice. Um, and I will probably will not subject you to watch me playing it again. Okay. I think I got that one on the first try. So that's it. That's our two, uh, verses. And, uh, 
uh, we can leave that disarm recording on that and uh, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this track just highlight the track hit duplicate Now, I don't know if I really want to, to double this up uh, in the end. Uh, this is more for an experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a, a left and a right uh, track on this. And uh, let me move the video out of the way here. So I will duplicate my guitar chorus left. guitar chorus right. Uh, the left one I'm going to pan 100% to the left. The right one I will pan 100% to the right. Now if I'm not really happy with the end result uh, of the of the um, doubled track then what I can really do is just decide okay well which which of the takes is best uh, or which of the tracks is best. Recenter that and then mute the other one and then I'll be back to a single non-doubled track. So this is really just more for fun than anything else. Um, when you're doubling a guitar part, generally what you really want is to to get very, very precise playing because you want, it's never going to be exactly the same and it's the subtle differences between the two recordings that kind of give it the, the, the fuller effect, but you still need for for the for the notes to be really, uh, you, you want it to sound like it's a single guitar that's being played, but coming through with more output, I guess. Um, that's, you, you don't, if you, if you're not hitting them consistently, then it's really going to sound like two guitars that are not playing in sync. I kind of feel like that's what I'm going to produce because this is a this is a kind of a tricky part for me to play very very consistently and on beat bum 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 you know I can get it close but I think we're going to find there's a little bit of a fluctuation in there so again this is just for fun so we'll start by selecting the left side here and I'm going to go right to the Again, I'm going to start it. Let's zoom it in a little bit here. I'll get the camera out of the way. I'm going to start one measure before the chorus, uh, just to give me a little bit of a lead in. Uh, you can also set a lead in uh, in your metronome, and I'll demonstrate that later. But for now, I actually just want to hear the music that's that's coming in. Okay, you can see that my track number here has jumped because that took me several attempts. Uh, one was because I forgot to stop playing at the end of this part of the chorus and I continued to the second part of the chorus and realized, oh, well, for this experiment, I'm actually only playing this first part because this is the part we want to double. So now I've switched over to the right track and I'm going to record this. Uh, and again, I want it to sound pretty much in sync with the other one. So it's going to take me a couple of attempts, uh, but hopefully we'll find the end result will be kind of a fuller sound. Not perfect, but let's see what we got. Yeah, uh, 
uh, it could use a little work. So I'm going to re-record uh, each part and see if I can get it a little tighter. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I, I feel like I'm kind of rushing these a little bit. The So uh, I probably will go back and fine tune that. Uh, this is not, I think, the final uh, attempt at this. But it gives you an idea of the process if you want to double up the track. Um, and I think I will try for the other. Uh, this will come back four times, actually. This is the first one. It comes back in the bridge. Then we have a second chorus and then a second bridge. But what I'll do here is I'm actually going to jump ahead and I'm going to duplicate the track one more time. Just call it chorus two. Uh, this is the second part, so we're going to jump right up to bar 22 and I'll actually jump to bar 21 so I can because uh, I can hear the lead in. Uh, now this one uh, I'm going to want to center stepped on that, so I'm going to run it one more time. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of squeeze in the tails here um, to minimize any kind of hiss crossover there. So let's ha let's see how it sounds uh, switching from the first part to the second part, from that doubled up first part into the, the mono second part. <laughs> It's a little jarring. Uh, I think what I'll do here is I'm going to... Uh, not sure if I'm blocking it here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm dialing back the hard panning on those two tr tracks here uh, for the doubled up chorus. I'll go to about 70% pan and see how this sounds. <laughs> It's it's a start. Uh, I think that's going to need some some tweaking, uh, but and maybe doubling the track isn't the right way to go. But for fun, uh, I'll continue recording uh, with with this uh, this setup. But before I go back to that, what I'm going to do is go to the outro, which is uh, basically this section that I just recorded. But there's a couple of differences, and I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, basically, first time I'm going to play it through uh, just the way I did this last one. Um, and then I'm going to go back in and record three different bars, which have some some tweaks to them, uh, the, the way it was recorded on the album. Uh, now, again, the right way to do it would be to play it the way the guitarist did. He was improvising. He was just changing a couple things around uh, in the end. 
but I'm going to use this as an opportunity to just kind of show how you can use uh, different takes to to kind of layer those on. So I'm going to go back to the uh, the guitar tab here, and if we are looking at our rhythm guitar and we're going to the outro, you see the uh, normally we da 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 with a little bit of a bend. But on the opening bar, da 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 to the open E. So that's on bar 59. Then, so we got three bars here. We got the one modified one, the, the two kind of normal ones. Then we go da 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 which this one, I don't have that down. This is a little bit too fast for my level of dexterity at this point. So this is going to take me multiple attempts to get in the ballpark of this. Then we go back to one more of these modified ba da bum bum with the open E, and then we got two more. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play it through straight, and then I'm going to modify it. So again, I'm going to one bar before. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to that first bar uh, and I'm going to change my metronome to give me a count in of one minute. And uh, I will then um, play the modified version, which instead of will be just for that one bar. Okay, so now I will just expand out my uh, my takes. Here's the take that I just overwrote, uh, but I only want the the one bar of that take. So I'm going to go back to the first take, drag over. It's going to pull this back in. So now if I listen to it. <laughs> Go back to, I'm going to do that one more time on um, bar 63. I'm just going to play the exact same thing. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it to the end of this bar and drag that. Now, the last one, and this is the one that's going to take me multiple attempts, is this bar 62. So if I play it slow, So that, for me anyways, the way I'm playing it, it requires a different fingering, and I haven't really internalized this, so... So I'm just going to plow through, and I'm going to play it until it sounds halfway decent. Um, trial and error. Um, so I'm going back to... Again, that's bar 62. So I'm going to click right here. And this will take multiple tries.
All right, that's not perfect, but that's going to have to do for now. Uh, I'll go back and I'll keep working on it and get it better, but really just to not have to do this all evening. Um, I'm just going to go back in. So 6201 to 6301. Uh, so this is where I want to end it. I'm going to click down to the second take and tell it that I want that. All right, that should do it. I've got take one, then take two, back to take one, then to take three, take two, and then I finish on take one. But if I collapse it down, I just have one, one take that will play through uh, cleanly from start to finish. Uh, so that's really the process for me. Um, you know, this isn't final. Uh, I'm going to go back in and fill in the remaining parts. Uh, but this is, this is really the structure. Um, if, if you're able to go through and, and play the, uh, the guitar parts straight through without any, uh, fumbles or mistakes in one take, um, then all power to you. Uh, you're better than I am. Uh, but for me, this process works, and hopefully, you know, as I get better, uh, there will be less takes involved. So hopefully that showed a little bit of my process in uh, recording this song and kind of what I went through in the evolution of my thinking on how to approach this. Um, in my previous uh, home recording uh, experience, which is pretty limited, um, I went through the recording with um, with my son on drums and, uh, and my daughter on vocals of uh, the Beatles Come Together. And um, this was really my first time playing around with recording anything. Uh, and it took me a while to, to even get the guitar parts down to the point where I could record it. Um, not to mention the bass part. That was my first time even trying to play a bass. Uh, and there was no way I was going to play those start to finish uh, perfectly. Uh, the bass part I had to really break down into chunks. Uh, and the guitar solo as well. I really kind of had to work on parts of that solo, you know, a piece at a time. And then I strung them together in the edit. Uh, and the end result was pretty good. Not perfect. But for, you know, a student at my level, it was fine. Uh, it was a learning experience. Uh, I really wanted to try to avoid that sort of piecemeal approach of chopping up a, a part into small segments uh, with this song. I thought I would be able to just do it start to finish. Uh, but as I went through the learning process, um, I, I think I've come to realize that that wasn't, that may not have been the way that it was recorded. Uh, and either way, whether or not it was or was not all done in one perfect take um, is almost kind of irrelevant because when you're recording a song, who's to say what the right way is for what you're trying to do? And the other piece of this is really something that I try to apply to all my hobbies, um, is the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. You know, you put in 20% of the effort to get 80% of the results. Um, for hobby type activities, I try not to be a stickler for perfection. Partially because my hobbies are so broad, uh, they cover such a wide area. You know, I, I, I don't want to be a, a specialist in my hobbies. Uh, it's just not what interests me. So I don't strive for absolute perfection. I strive to keep moving forward and to have fun. So for that, the, the concept of putting in 20% of the effort to get 80% of the results really kind of opens up my time to be spent more broadly. And for me, um, you know, it's, it's just more interesting that way. So rather than really drill this song to the point where I could get up on stage and play it straight through perfectly, which I'm sure I'm not likely to do anytime soon. Um, nor do I necessarily want to with this particular song. Um, this is just something I, I picked up for fun for this particular process. Um, it, it really doesn't seem necessary for me to get it absolutely perfect. What's more important is that, um, is that I can get a part down that's good enough that it doesn't spoil the mix. Uh, whether or not I've succeeded in that is really for us to figure out going forward, but 
hopefully I'm close enough that when I move on to the next parts and start laying them down, they'll fit together into a pretty cohesive whole. Is it going to be 100% as good as the original song? Absolutely not, especially when I get to the vocals. No way. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is to have fun, to learn from the process, and hopefully share some of that with you. And, and, and if you find it interesting, um, tune in, because there's going to be more parts going down into this mix. And then I will be bringing in some outside help again in the form of my instructor, Scott, to, uh, to help with the mixing and, uh, and, and really the, the detailed work on how to take this mix of parts and turn it into something that sounds better as a whole. So hopefully I'll see you all there. Remember, we're all learning.